Welcome back. Journalism is under threat in Sri Lanka. Last week, we reported on the attack on MTV, a privately owned television station there. The station had been called unpatriotic by the state-run media for its coverage of the war against Tamil rebels. Then it was raided by gunmen. Two days after that, the editor of an anti-government newspaper was shot dead on his way to work. The attacks against critical media outlets came at a crucial time, just ahead of a major push by Sri Lankan government forces on Tamil strongholds. The listening posts Minakshi Ravi now on the war against journalism in Sri Lanka. <laughs> Sri Lanka's government says it's close to winning the island's civil war after 25 years. For over 25 years, the island nation of Sri Lanka has struggled under a near constant state of civil war. Along with thousands of civilians, journalists and media professionals have been caught in the crossfire of the battle between the government and the separatist Tamil Tigers. On one side, you have the threat of uh, direct physical attack. Then you have the threat of economic attack. And on the third side, you have the threat of the employees being attacked. Media has suffered and the government has several tactics. First, they'll impose censorship, severe censorship. And then they use terrorism legislation to imprison journalists. 2009 has begun on a grim note for Sri Lankan media. On the 6th of January, MTV, the English channel owned and operated by the Tamil MBC networks, was attacked. This didn't come as a complete surprise. Throughout 2008, state control TV stations had been criticizing MTV and its news coverage, which they labeled as anti government. The criticism grew harsher, and the threats against the broadcaster became louder as the year progressed. First, the petrol bomb was thrown at the MTV building. And two days later, a group of armed thugs barged in and destroyed the channel's main control room. It was done very professionally, and everything was destroyed within 15 minutes. MTV and its sister channels, Sirasa and Shakti, have had a rocky relationship with the government of President Mahinda Rajapaksa. The escalating war and MTV's coverage of it has added to tensions. MTV is owned by a tank. And this war, coverage of the war, the government felt that they were not covering it properly. They did not uh, give enough importance to the government's so-called victories. And they were furious. Sri Lanka's media crackdown is not restricted to ethnicity. Those angered by so-called anti-government reporting see both Tamil and Sinhalese media outlets as offenders. Two days after the attack on MTV, Lasanta Vikramatunga, a Sinhalese and strongly anti-government editor of Sri Lanka's Sunday leader newspaper, was shot dead. <laughs> Lasantha phoned his friends and said he was being followed. They advised him to go somewhere safe, but he responded saying, the most they can do is kill me. When the car stopped at a junction, four bikers surrounded Lasantha and shot him. We spoke to Vikramatunge's brother, Lal, who is chairman and managing director of the Sunday Leader Group. He spoke of his brother's constant run-ins with the government and the systematic campaign of intimidation against him. This is not the first occasion that La Santa had been targeted. He was assaulted uh, when he was going home once. He was shot at. The press has been burnt twice. We were shut down under emergency regulations and he was to be arrested a couple of times under the emergency regulations. And it, this was the last one. The family has pinned the blame for the assassination squarely on the authorities. So it's clearly the work of the government or some part of the government. And Lasanta was determined to have the last word even after his death. Aware of the extreme danger he was in, Lasanta had written an editorial that was published posthumously in the Sunday Leader. 
he wrote, in the course of the past few years, the independent media have increasingly come under attack. Countless journalists have been harassed, threatened and killed. It has been my honor to belong to all those categories and now especially the last. When finally I am killed, it will be the government that kills me. The attack on MTV and the murder of La Santa sparked a show of anger from press freedom organizations in Sri Lanka. Public protests were held in Colombo during the week after the attacks. The government says it condemns such attacks. It blames rival groups claiming they want to bring the government into disrepute at a time when the war is escalating. They say they have regained large areas previously controlled by the Tamil Tigers. Isn't it then their responsibility to avert these sorts of murderous incidents on their land? People are being gunned down in broad daylight. This is not a border or territorial dispute where people kill each other. Journalists cannot be killed like this. In response to the public protests, the president's office issued a statement denying any government involvement in the media attacks. But there was more. The president said the media were irresponsible in their coverage. He said they should be concerned about the consequences of their reports. Consequences such as perhaps attracting international criticism, criticism that came in waves following Vikramatunga's death. However, for those who live with terror and for those who witness and record it, international criticism of the government is simply not enough. So we need the support. Entire media groups must get together, entire civic society must get together, and the international uh, community must support Sri Lanka to move out of this. Soon it will be uncontrollable. The international community must also share the blame for the today's situation in Sri Lanka. They'll issue a condemning, condemned statement here and there, and that's it. It stops there full stop. What further action do they take against the, uh, the atrocities committed against the journalists? Nothing. Until help comes, there are journalists and media activists of all ethnicities in Sri Lanka who work to cover the often untold stories of the island nation. More Global Village Voices now on freedom of the press and Sri Lanka. The situation in, in Gaza and Sri Lanka is actually com comparable. Journalists in both places are under threat, but the interesting thing is, is that at least in Gaza there are some reporters. There are no reporters allowed into the Sri Lankan war zone. It has never been so bad in Sri Lanka over the last year. Any independent voice, any journalist, any independent journalist has been shut. Over the last year, the few sources of information, independent sources and balanced sources of information in Sri Lanka are dying. Finally, President George W. Bush's departure from the White House has had news channels pouring through their video archives, compiling retrospectives on eight years of an administration that pollsters say is the most unpopular in American history. New media outlets, many of them satirical, have been doing the same, and there is absolutely no shortage of material for them to work with. The people at 236.com at the Huffington Post website cobbled together what they call the ultimate George Bush retrospective. We pilfered it from their site and made it our Internet Video of the Week. We'll see you next time at the Listening Post. All is tipped. There you are. You're running for your life. You're a shooting star. All those years. The title was Bin Laden oh, Determined to Attack Inside the United States. That's all you work, but now it shows that one shining moment you reached deep inside. In Children, do learn. Moment, oh, you you Filters on internets. Internet. Stop you these terrorist killers. Killer. Now watch this drive. Harriet Ellen Myers. You always did your best. Cause inside you knew. The surge is working. I do not recall. But I'm the decider, and I decide what is best. Access of evil. One shining moment you knew. 30 seconds. Well, actually, you forgot Poland. And I, I want to thank you all for... And Brownie, you're doing a heck of a job. Uranium. 
from Africa. The fundamentals of our economy are strong. And I think the world would be better off if we did leave. If we didn't, if we if if we left, the world would be worse.